All right, so I'm Nicole Hartley Bradford. I am here in Edmonton. Oh wait, I'm in Calgary. <laughs> well, I already don't know where I am. <laughs> That's because I have recently uprooted and I'm going on the road with Awakening the Village Roadshow. And I am making a virtual stop here with Grace and all of you to talk about the Cherry Hill Eco Village Group, which are, um, which Grace will tell you more about soon. And some of you are here, so you can also chime in. But we just really wanted to share what's up with you all with more people, especially at this time where there's a possibility um, in regards to some land near um, Quenelle in BC, and, and which kind of has kind of like motivated and inspired and energized this kind of call out for for more people, more resources, more possibilities. So a quick story of my involvement. I met Grace, I think it was like maybe as many as six years ago now, um, when I looked after um, her daughter Jules, who has autism. And I hadn't mes met Grace until after the time I spent with Jules. But when I met you, Grace, I so vividly remember um, meeting you at, at Tim Hortons and you came in with this dazzling bejeweled cowboy hat and you were, you were fresh back from Nashville and you you just like lit up the whole Tim Hortons and and I was just so stoked to meet you and I met you through some mutual friends who I have a lot of respect for and who are also village types and yeah, it's just been, it's just been great. I mean, we've met for so many lunches and teas and conversations that always just weave all, all kinds of uh, elements in. And it's just been a joy and a pleasure to get to know you better and better as the years have gone by. And about two years ago now, you reached out um, in regard to the work that I'd done with Diana Leaf Christian around sociocracy. So I helped bring Diana to Calgary and she taught sociocracy to a group of us. And, um, and then Grace had this group that she was starting to meet with uh, kind of more regularly, I ended, they're, they're full of friends really. Um, and you were learning sociocracy in order to bring some like more order and process to your decision making. Um, and so we, I think that was one of the first kind of Zooms or Skypes I ever did actually, come to think of it. And, and then a few, a week or two ago only, um, I got an email from Grace sending me a listing, a listing. And I clicked on that listing and I just was kind of blown away. There was this beautiful wood homes with, with stained glass and they just all looked like little kind of rustic Canadian castles. And I sent back a keen reply, a quick reaction, as we say in sociocracy. And then we started an uh, email conversation about kind of more collaborating and, and how I might be able to help out. And then Grace came over to my house, COVID be damned. <laughs> and we had a beautiful talk on the sunny steps. And we decided that I would interview her quickly in a one-on-one -on -one and send that out to the people who had expressed interest, who I had shared the listing with. And that then we'd meet here today and do another conversation that maybe goes in more depth, introduces whoever's watching in the future to, and in the present, to more of the members of the Cherry Hill group. So here we are. Yay! Thank you, Nicole. You're so welcome. And I have a little list of questions. Um, and then I'm hoping that anyone who's new to the group can also fill in some gaps because sometimes in these kinds of calls, I know what I know, but I forget that I learned it, you know, and then there can be all these holes that other people are like, so cute. One time I was doing an interview like this and towards the end of the interview, someone chimed in from the audience and said, so where on the planet are you <laughs> to the people I was interviewing? Because we'd forgotten to mention that. So 
Yeah, so maybe what we can do is, uh, maybe Grace, you can talk a little about yourself and talk a little about the people who are here from your group and maybe a little bit about the wider group too, since they're not here, but so that we can really get an idea of, of the group that's already established and already kind of in. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you, Nicole, so much for organizing this and coming up with this idea. I'm just going to actually turn off my phone because somebody just called me. <laughs> turn off the phone um, and call them back later. Um, my name is Grace and I live in Jasper at the moment. I've lived here now for 21 going on 22 years. Um, married to a wonderful fella named David Wensley. I have two children. Um, as Nicole mentioned, one has autism, Julianne, and my son is Griffin. And um, I've been involved in the healing arts and working with children, I would say, for the last 20, 22 years. Like, really, my life's work has been working with children. And then I got into, um, because my daughter has autism, I was led to try and learn every single modality I could to heal her up basically. So um, I also now work with a, a modality called SRT, which stands for spiritual response therapy. And uh, I work um, on a phone line with that two days a week. I get a lot of clients from Europe and uh, uh, the States primarily. And um, so it's a really wonderful modality and, and um, I see it as something I can carry forward in, in the Cherry Hill model as well. So getting to this idea of an eco village, that's been going on with me for many, many years now. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with Damanur, I visited Damanur many years ago, probably 10 years ago now, uh, a couple of times. I've been there three times in total twice with my daughter and once i actually got to sleep right in the temple if you're if you're not familiar with it i'd encourage you to take a look at it it's an incredible place in north italy uh, it really 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 um creates an energy of what's possible what humans together can create so they built this wonder of the world with their hands they literally dug the place out if you're not familiar with it it's quite a story so damanur it's d-a-m-a-n-h-u-r and it means city of light and i feel like with this project particularly this location that we're looking at right now uh, in the Caribous, there's some connection to Damanur. And the reason I say that is when one of our friends who's part of this, she's not here today, Disha and I went out and looked at the property. Um, there was some pieces that came in, not to sound too weird, but I was like, oh, this is so Damanurian. There's something going on here. And um, as we're working through all the little nuances of this place, it's really becoming a village not just buying a property it's it's a big project this is a big project and so just the capper one of the partners that owns the property right now he's like an ally to us he's been helping me out so much and helping us out so much and um one of the things he's been working on is finding out how we can improve the internet service there, for example. So right now they do have internet service on the property, but it's pretty weak. So the fellow he's working with on this, his, and he's a specialist in this type of thing, his name is Falco. And when I heard that, I chuckled to myself because the fellow who started Damanur and had the vision of Damanur his name was Falco too. And I was uh, lucky enough to meet him while he was still alive. He's passed on now. And uh, actually had a pranic healing session done by him while I was there. So phenomenal community. It's the largest community in the world right now. It's, it's a thousand people live there. Um, and it's been sustaining itself for 40 years. So, you know, they just, again, show us what's possible. So uh, this particular property came across my desk, uh, like Nicole said, recently, literally three weeks ago today. 
So, you know, and luckily I opened it because I don't always open everything I get because probably like lots of people here, you get a lot of things. And especially with this COVID time, there was a lot of stuff being passed around. So I did open it and I, like Nicole, had a pretty orgasmic, <laughs> I would say, reaction to the place. And for those of you who have seen it, it's no lie, man. This place is quite something. I really, I've never seen anything like it. Um, I've looked at a lot of properties over the last 12 years, but this was like, wow. I mean, my bands were out to the sides of the room and my husband was like, oh my God. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think he'd ever really seen me like that. Maybe on our wedding day, but it was pretty, uh, it was pretty spectacular. I, I love that feeling of absolute bliss, you know, where it was just like, wow. Ah! this is the place this is the place oh my god so of course we had to go look at it so we we got a special tour we didn't even have to go in with the rest of the the gang there was nine groups who looked at this property and they looked at it on a saturday and we looked at it on a thursday and so it was myself my daughter was with me julianne and uh and my friend disha who's part of the group as well and so for those of you here, I'm assuming that you've all seen the listing and I'm assuming that Nicole, you'll add the listing to anybody that you send it out to. Um, because what I want to say about the listing and what I've been really transparent about with everybody is, so once we got there, we started at house number three, which one of our members is here today, Nicole, and she was really cute. And she's like, I want number three. And then as soon as we saw number three, I was like, no, you don't. It's not what it looks like on paper. <laughs> so I was so grateful that we went because, you know, of course they can show you anything they, they desire. As we were approaching the property, there was an eagle that came in on the left of us. And so I really had that image in my mind when we arrived at property number three or house three, because the message I got was just keep an open mind and, and keep a higher perspective. As it turned out, uh, number three and that whole area where number three is has a ton of potential to be almost like, as Disha said, a general store. It is a really cute place. The light that comes in at the top of the building is lovely. So if you had people that were coming and going that weren't maybe permanent residences, but just needed a place to crash, they I could see them living up there. That could be their pad. Um, but this is again, all open to discussion. This is just what we saw. This was just, you know, ideas that, that popped while we were there. That area is where the stage is, the stage needs work. There's a pond there, the pond needs work. The whole area there needs work. They used to have in its day chickens. So there's a big chicken coop. There's, they used to have pigs, they used to have cows, they used to have horses. I mean, there's all these buildings. They all need work. The good news is they're all made from logs. So it's not like they need a lot of structural work. They need a lot of cleanup work. That, that, that number three area is cleanup. That's like army cleanup. Music's blaring. We're in our t-shirts. For those of you who drink beer, we're drinking beer. For those of you who don't, we're drinking kombucha, whatever. And we're just getting her done. <laughs> right? So, so we were like, okay, well, you know, good thing we're here. And then, and the other thing I want to share is this property is remote. So as we were driving up the road there, you know, I was realizing, oh, this road alone is going to deter some people because this is, this is, you know, it's right now it's flooding season in Quenelle. So we had to go the long way to get up to this property. So it took us an hour to get up there. Typically, it would take 45 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes, but because one of the bridges was flooded and because you're going up, 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 you know, it took us, it took us a, an hour. So you have to know going in that um, that's the distance to Quenelle. That's the distance to a hospital. That's the distance to a, do, you know, a dentist. That's, that's, so because of that, we would have to have a lot of provisions on board ahead of time. And fortunately, uh, two of our partners who are not here right now, uh, one is a naturopathic doctor and very highly esteemed, and the other one is an acupuncturist, and she's also very highly esteemed. So we would definitely have some 
um, medications on hand before, you know, to, to help treat people. And I think also we'd have to definitely have a sense of, um, you know, like when you think of um, Heliski resorts where people are remote and they have an action plan in place for emergencies. So we definitely would want to have an action plan that we all agree on. So um, from there, we went to what's called number five, uh, the number five house. And it's a beautiful beginning of a property. Uh, it's as it says in the listing, they're transparent there. It's not complete. So there's work that needs to be done there. But what really struck me there was, like you said, Nicole, was the stained glass. So what I would like to share with you is a little story is so my daughter and a good friend of mine who's investing in this project and myself, and it's actually this friend of mine came up with the idea. We were in Chartres Cathedral in France and we were just really fortunate because there's a labyrinth there that's only open on Fridays and we arrived there on a Friday. So we got to walk the labyrinth, which was really amazing. And she took a picture of me and my daughter walking the labyrinth and, and I can be pretty tear jerky person, but I was bawling, like I was bawling my eyes out in there. And there's a picture of me and Julianne with a thousand orbs around us. Like, I mean, there's a thousand orbs. If you're interested in seeing that picture, it's on my website, childrenofautumn.com, under a blog section. Um, and we didn't even know, like Helen didn't even know what they were when she saw the picture. She's like, what's going on with my camera? Because she had taken so many pictures. But for those of you who know Chartres Cathedral, um, it's obviously got a lot of stained glass in it, and they call it the Jewel Box. And so the nickname for my daughter is Jules. Uh, and, and so Helen says, oh, we need to create a place. Uh, that's, we need to call it the Jewel House. And it will be, uh, it'll all have stained glass in it. And it will be this place where a lot of healing happens. And so when, when we entered in this number five house, and, and it's designed one of the rooms is designed as a theater and my background actually was in theater so i i uh, performed for five years here in jasper a one-woman show based on edith cavill and um and i've taught theater a lot to children and so forth and so uh i was like wow okay and what i noticed in that particular room is the stained glass was that of roses so it's all the stained glass of roses which for those of you who are familiar with Mary Magdalene and the rose and that's also uh, very much connected to Charlotte and there's all these connections I was like hmm okay in the middle of nowhere there's stained glass in the buildings this is bizarre right that's interesting so noted right and but still work like you could see still not finished this place is not finished so now we move on to the next house which is number one and um and that house and every house thereafter including the music studio is wonderful and could be moved in tomorrow basically there's no furniture but but as far as structurally goes wonderful so uh as we got further and further in our uh time there we basically fell in love with the place and uh, my friend Disha, as well as Nicole here, who's on, on camera today, have horses and Disha would bring her horses there, of course. And I'm assuming Nicole would eventually bring some horses there too. And so the, the immediate vision was with all the people who do also healing work is you would have, you could have horse therapy, you could have, um, you could have, you know, healing, you could have a lot of retreats there you could do a lot of healing work there. Just being there is being in another frequency. So just to be <clears throat> very clear, the first stage of this project, <clears throat> excuse me, is to create a place where people could live. Um, so they can have a place to hang their hat, they have fresh water, they have a place to grow food. If they eat meat, you know, there is lots of hunting up there. Um, Obviously, we would have chickens, that kind of thing. If you're not, if you're not a meat eater and you're vegan, that's fine too. So, you know, this this setup is um, uh, as as you've probably heard. If you've gotten this far, 
we, we would like you to agree to three things. One, our vision statement, the second, our mission statement, and the third, that you would follow the governance model of sociocracy. And for those of you who don't know sociocracy, um, it is, in my estimation, the best governance model I've ever seen and the best decisions get made for the whole group moving forward. So um, I really thank you. And that was all you, Nicole, actually, was I was there having a meeting with the originative, uh, originatory, I don't even know if that's a word, original, I'm making up stuff now, um, edit that part if you can, dee, dee, dee. Um, <laughs> but the originators, um, we were, we've been meeting since 2018, and we were meeting on a regular basis, and a big part of our meeting was following Diana Leaf Christian's book about forming community and all the different processes that you go through and looking at your values uh, particularly and why do you want to be in community because it's it's challenging it's not an easy thing right and they say that you know it's like being married to everybody in the community so um, you really want to know you really want to have your whys understood clear there as to why you would do this so we work through a lot of that and there's exercises you're probably familiar with Nicole that she gets you to do on what are your values and give us some examples of when you've worked in group before and what was it about working in group that really sort of lit your fan and and so forth so uh, we did all that and from that is where we where we came up with our vision statement and then our mission statement and then we came to this place where we were like and you were there and i just happened to be at nicole's place uh in calgary with my computer and we were having our meeting and this whole discussion around leadership came up because i'd been kind of just moving things forward uh not because i'm an ego maniac but because nobody else was and so, uh, and I offered it to the group. I was like, well, does anybody else want to do this? I mean, here's what you need to do. You just take minutes, you, you know, put out the call, da, da, da. and they were like, no, no, it's okay. You keep doing it. And I was like, okay. So, so this, but you could tell there was these issues around leadership, like, uh, that people have. And my personal feeling on that is, I think a lot of us have been here before, not to be too esoteric but we probably had leaders that were um, controlling or, you know, we didn't have such a great time in that situation. So we have some anxiety about leadership. So God bless you, Nicole, because so we're in this meeting. I remember it really, really well, because I remember specifically my one friend who was really having issues with it, with this idea of how do we pick a leader? And then I got off and that was, that was the homework basically was the homework was then, okay, how do we determine leadership? How do we figure that out? Because often things don't happen unless you have some leader, you know, orchestrating. And then, so that was the homework. We got off the Zoom call and Nicole goes over to her bookshelf. She pulls out this booklet and she goes, this is what you need. And it was sociocracy. And I took it home and I read it and I was like, oh my God. And then I shared it with the rest of the group and they were all for it and they were like okay and then that was our next you know we learned as much from the booklet that you gave us but then it was like okay now we need to actually learn this and then there was more synchronicity involved and i don't know if you remember this i'm not a huge facebook person i'm on there but i'm not on there all the time and just by chance i saw you when um um Diana Leaf Christian came here one year, and that was roughly two years ago, I want to say now, uh, around Mother's Day. And so I was coming to Calgary already to see my kids, because both my kids live in Calgary. And you had posted something like, oh, just picked up Diana Leaf Christian for this weekend's event. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? She's in town? Like, oh my God. And I messaged you and asked is there any chance I could get in I could only come on on the Sunday you were like absolutely come da 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 and, and I just planned to be a fly on the wall but no they threw me right in there and I was part of a circle and it was like you just figure it out girl and I was like wow this is amazing so the synchronicity of all that and then that's how I met Diana Leaf Christian and that's how then we got in touch. And then she formed uh, this group where she was doing classes over, over 
like through Zoom. So most of the people that we worked with, uh, nobody here of our group uh, that's taken that course um, uh, is on right now, but we worked with her weekly, right? And her, her assistant there, who you know as well, he's from Calgary, very sweet guy. Yeah, Louis, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so we got to do the whole thing. And then from there, our group, did some little projects where we did a proposal and so forth. And we did it around microgreens, just something very simple. And it was great. It was great to use the tools. And that's what she really recommends is that you practice sociocracy for at least 18 months as a group and then make a final decision on, you know, what your thoughts are on it. But what I can testify so far, um, I swear it's true is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> is uh is uh that i i was amazed at how the best decision gets put forward the best person for the job the best outcome like it's it's almost like magic i love it it's fantastic so um yeah so there you go so here we are now, um, we have basically raised, uh, originally we wanted to make it super simple and just have six groups of people put in $250,000 each and boom, there's six houses, uh, seven, actually seven places people can live in and, you know, cinchy. But given COVID and, and the situation and a lot of people's money's tied up in stock market or so forth or they lost their job or what have you uh that idea went out the window pretty quickly so then it was like okay so what can we do next so we're also in touch with a, another group another co-op that is based out of kamloops and we share a lot of information c and i uh in fact i shared sociocracy with her um once i found out about it from you nicole and so then she was on our as part of our team as well and uh, anyways, what she has recently shared with us is all of her co-op documents that she worked with a lawyer who specializes in cooperative um, corporation forming. And so she shared all those documents with, uh, with us. And, uh, and I shared them with a friend of mine who's a lawyer in Toronto. And she said, wow, this is really comprehensive. Like this is really well done. So it has already built into it the shareholders agreement. Like if you want to get out of it, if you know, there's a few tweaks that I think we want to make just as a startup for uh, this project, because uh, the way their, their docs right now are, are laid out, that is basically you could say I'm in and then two weeks later, you could say I'm out and then we only have a year to pay you out. And I think for the startup, we need a minimum of three years. So it shows that on your end, you're committed. You're not just in it for like, I'm in, I'm out, I'm in, I'm out. We need to, to make this happen, this particular property, we need people who are actually committed for the long term. Um, because there's a lot of, there's, there's so many buildings there, first of all. And it really is a village that you're building there. It's not just it's not just it's not just a house like it's it's a village it's and that's where you know the daminorian piece we're not building daminor which is like a eighth wonder of the world but you know we are building an aspect of that which is going to require a lot of uh, women power a lot of manpower a lot of wonder woman power um a lot of guidance and so forth but so far all of that is coming in day by day like it's amazing so um yeah, so what we've decided now is to move forward is uh, we're raising money through selling shares. So we have, I have on my desk a cauldron of uh, names with people that have put in from $1,000, that's our minimum, is you have to put in a minimum of $1,000 to $160,000 uh, and everything in between. $20,000, $5,000, $4,000, so forth. So uh, that's what we're doing right now. We've uh, been in touch with the partners uh, a lot. And the, there was supposed to be a closing date for offers uh, last Friday. And I got that extended again. 
and um, they know a little bit more about us now as well too so there's a little more um, synergy going on there so that's good uh, but I, I really feel like it's important for us to have to really make the right uh, in my meditation this morning and in some work I did this morning actually what really came through clearly was discernment the word discernment we have to really discern every single piece of this and make sure going forward that this is the right property for us for sure so um so that's where we sit wow thank you so much for reiterating um i mean for me it's a reiteration <laughs> and yeah. and you know i noticed that there's a part of me that wants to say you know what's the total price tag what percentage where are you at but then it's like it's almost irrelevant because as time goes by and more people watch this those numbers might change um also i think that the 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 thing for people to do if they're really interested in finding those kinds of things out is to get in touch with probably you grace unless there are other people who are also fielding those calls mm -hmm. um and so i would encourage people who are seeing this in the future um rather than here today on sunday june 7th to I'll send this out with notes. Um, I'll include links to all, all kinds of things that I'm taking notes about here and they can get up to speed and really like connect around that. Because again, it's like you said, it's not, it's not like buying a house where it's like, you know, you see the listing, you take a look and you buy it. It's mm -hmm. a bigger, bigger conversation. Mm -hmm. And I'm very familiar with that um, on a very much smaller scale um, here at the house where I have been living for the last four and a half years which um, the first iteration of the house we actually had a death ritual for last week because awakening house it died uh, it wasn't it wasn't set up in a sustainable way and the agreements in place um, were why and and so now that house is is dead and buried literally in the backyard <laughs> and um, and now it, it just so happened that in the days after the death ritual um, I got an opportunity to work with a different group of people and it turns out I will be moving back here and I've created um, ideas I've come up with ideas because in sociocracy you present ideas you don't present proposals because the proposal is what you get after you share ideas and cover all the all the gaps you've missed um, so I'm going to be sharing these ideas with our group uh, in order to make clear agreements that I trust will be sustainable or regenerative um, rather than it fizzling out too. So yay for learning and growing. And that's one of the things I so love about sociocracy is that how it builds in feedback loops. So you're constantly learning from your mistakes and implementing the changes. I am curious, would you like to read out the vision and mission of your group, Grace? Sure, sure. Thanks. Let me just find it. Ah, here it is. Okay. Yeah. So the vision statement that we came up with on June 8th. Oh, so almost exactly two years ago. Wow. 2018. That's interesting. At our eighth meeting is a world in which everyone can choose to live in a healthy, thriving, ecologically sustainable settlement fueled by a practice of gratitude. That's our vision statement. And our mission statement is, the mission of our community is to create a harmonious living environment that is economically sustainable, environmentally respectful, and nurturing one's spirit. While respecting personal privacy, we foster cooperation and human connection allowing members to flourish and feel a sense of belonging and purpose. Beautiful. Thank you. Something else I really love about this is that the whole process is not just a specific village making experience, but it's part of this kind of movement of, of village making that includes how to make a villager then how to get villagers to work together to make a village. 
And also something that is really dear to my purpose is how to make a network of villages. I have uh, a vision that was really fueled by my friend Hugo's um, book Seeds, and I'll put that in the links too because it's an extraordinary piece of writing. It's kind of a dystopic utopian telling, and in it, um, Canada has has evolved into being called the United Canadian Communities, and it's a network of eco villages that all follow. Um, basically very simple rules. One is that the land must be stewarded in regenerative ways. And another is that each village must be allowed to have its own culture. And when you're in a particular village, you're to follow the cultural norms of that village, not challenge them. Mm. And then I'm not sure if this is in the book or if I added it later in my own mind to what I would want it to be. Um, but it said that as of the age of majority, a, a, a young person um, must be free to leave the village if they want to explore other cultures and other possibilities. And at the time that I first read it, which was probably six or seven years, eight years ago, um, that really struck me as, as something that became part of my personal um, mission and vision to help bring in that network of villages into being. So I'm excited because this is doing all of those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what other questions did I have? And if anyone else has questions, and you can um, write them in the side chat um, or, or unmute yourself and go ahead and, and ask them. <laughs> okay. I had, um, I, I heard you say a few times that you've looked at other other pieces of land and uh mm -hmm. how close have you come in the past to almost buying mm, two times i was at the lawyer's office and uh it was the lawyer in both cases that talked me out of it <laughs> ah. one time was quite funny because he was like how are you going to get on to this there's no easement at all like you're going to helicopter down like parachute in what's your plan and it was because there was friends, people that we knew who had subdivided. And it was also uh, quite high up. Um, uh, but that was the thing, like, the, you know, the, the lawyer was like, well, those people might move and then new people would be living there and they might not be so happy of all you guys are traipsing across their land. And there was trunk roads as well that had been there for years and years from logging but you know he explained that those could be closed down at any moment like you can't that's how we were always getting in anyways but he's like you can't rely on that like that's so yeah there's been a few big cries mm. yeah and that just that points out like i i think it's cute today that it doesn't look like we have any male embodied piece people on the call um, I'm just imagining what questions would come if, if friends of mine, you know, the, the dudes out there who would be like, you know, um, what are the mineral rights? Where's the water? Are there any wells? All kinds of sensible questions about, about infrastructure. Yeah, so we do have water rights. There is water on the property um, that is ours. That's, that's a big thing for me personally is that we have water and as one of the conditions for the sale. So just where we're at with the sale. So Elia, who's on the call here as well, uh, found out, uh, which was awesome, that because we had chosen now to register ourselves more as a co-op, um, that we could apply for funding of, of like a mortgage funding uh, through a number of different credit unions. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to look into that and see what that would look like, like, and what that would cost for us to mortgage. Cause right now we're, we're basically the, the listing price you asked, you sort of said you might want to know, and it's on the document anyways, if people have looked at it, is 1.5 is what the listing price is. So let's say we got it for 1. even 4 or 3, let's say 1. Point whatever, somewhere in there, right? What we have right now collected is close to $500,000. So if this was a typical buy, again, you know, we're putting down a third 
of it, that's a lot, right? That's, that's a good chunk. Um, we should be able to get a mortgage, right? I mean, that's another piece. Ideally, in my mind, we would have enough shareholders, whether they're residential shareholders, so you have a choice, or meaning you actually want to live on the property, or investment shareholders, and there's, and you receive an investment on um, the monies that you're putting in. Um, so you have choices there, right? Is is uh, is where we're at right now with that, uh, with the mortgage piece. So water, yes, there is a mine. I've looked into that. Um, it's not close, but it's what I've, I've put out a call to a very old friend of mine who's a geologist. I just heard back from them today. They are having some challenges with their, in their own family life, but he's going to take a look if he can see anything in the water table, if there would be any uh, uh, problems there. But what I was going to say is, when we put in the offer, which we'll be putting in an offer this week, one of the conditions will be a water sample. Like I do, I want to make sure that, you know, the water, because that's, to me, that's a big piece of why we're doing this is to make sure that we have sustainability for ourselves. If the world goes absolutely AWOL crazy, we could still be like when we went to see it, you know, there's nobody wearing masks up there. And there's nothing like you're just free, like it's freedom. Mm -hmm. And that's a big <clears throat> motivator for me personally is the freedom piece. And so that's what you, that's what you balance out is, okay, it is remote, but I get to be free. So, and, but Quinell is still, you know, it's close enough that there's enough services there. And there's some exciting services that are just starting up for anybody who's interested in getting into permaculture because they've just created a hub there, a food hub in Quinell of all places. So that's literally just came across my desk too. Uh, that was like a day after we went and saw the property. So it was like, what is going on here? Yeah. So it was just kept, you know, there's this building of like momentum of just keep going, keep going, just keep going. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. And that's a, that's about funding that's being made available to organizations in Cornell that are working on local food, um, sustainable or food supply. Hey, mm -hmm. food supply, but there is definitely like, you know, there's a huge hay field, like Bob, the fellow who took us out, he explained when they were younger and that's basically why these guys are all selling. They're all older. They're all older, like 70 plus. And, uh, and they quite honestly never, they're all friends and they never set it up though as an eco village. It was never an eco village. It was like, yeah, we're friends and that's your house and that's my house and da, da, da. And I'm sure they had some barbecues together, but it wasn't like they did anything else with it. They didn't, um, you know, they had some parties, but they, they didn't build on it. Right. Whereas I feel like we, I feel like we've arrived in Egypt, the pyramids are there and we can take it to another level. That's how I feel with this property. It's like, okay, yeah, we can move right in and live there, but we could also do a lot of stuff there. Like, it's amazing what we could do there. Right. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. So I see that um, the other Nicole has asked a question in there about, um, will you ever have the option to subdivide if the need arises in the future? So we could always apply for that, Nicole. Like there, there's two titles right now as it stands, right? Um, but it's, again, it's, and this is why it's not selling because it's a tricky sale. Like, first of all, <clears throat> they set up a company as well, right? So they have a company that, uh, that all those members that own all those different houses sit on. And then they, I don't know exact, I have a copy of their, of their, of their company as well. And I've shown that to a lawyer and she quite honestly said, it's, it's, I don't think it's going to work for you guys. It's outdated. It's, it's, the, we would have to put in so many new amendments and new bylaws and da, 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 better for you to create your own. And that's what led me to see and then getting her copy and so forth. Um, but you know what what I know about subdiv subdivision at this point is you can always put in a request. You know, it's a process, right? Like 
Nicole used to live in Jasper. So I don't know if you know Pete Ayumi out in uh, Dunster. Do you know him, Nicole? Um, he's this wonderful man who they call like the mayor of this town called Dunster. Sweetest guy. And he loved my daughter and I so much that when I was single mom, he was willing for us to move on to his property. He's got this like 30 acre property and it's zoned agriculture. And then, but you know, he wanted to do it legally. So he went to, I uh, forget the, the name of the organization that you go to, but the legal body and the paperwork involved to even get that emotion. He at the time was 70 years old and he was like, I can't do it. I, I just, it's, I hate this kind of stuff. First of all, I hate bureaucratic paperwork. Like it's, you know what I mean? But again, with sociocracy, it would be something that if the group wanted, right? That That's the piece that you have. People have to really get their heads around this part is even when we were talking with six people and it was like, everybody was so excited about, well, which house will I get? Which house will I get, right? And it's like, hold on, hold on, because in reality, every house is your house, even though you're going to be living primarily in one, we're not going to expect people to be moving around. Okay, switch it up, you know, moving on to the, no, but <laughs> right. Is technically speaking, we buy this together. You know, all of the houses are ours. Like they're the eco villages. So if your house is the unfortunate house that floods right or has a mudslide or a fire or whatever and when i say your house yours the one you're living in we're not going to be like oh sorry elia figure it out like we're over here having a barbecue anybody want a drink you know like it's it's our house that got affected so we have we're going to we're going to figure out together what are our ideas what are we doing here you know and uh, so that that piece alone, I think, is so massive for people to get because we're so used to like hoarding in a way is the word that comes up. Like, this is mine. Like, this is mine. And that's yours, you know, and this is mine. And, and so what we're working to do here is legally design something that's very legalistic. So, yeah, if you put money into it, you know then you can take your money out also. Like, it's not like, okay, once your money's in, it's in forever and you'll never get it back. And, and if we all turn into witches and, and, you know, start, I don't know. Freaking you out. <laughs> chanting weird things like, you know, you, you can get out, you know, don't worry. That's why we're taking care of the legal piece because I don't think any of us, quite honestly, I don't know, I don't know you, Jen, and I don't know the other person that's on the call, but I honestly don't think any of us are at a point where we um, are, because we've been conditioned so much around this idea that's, that this is the way we were raised. This is mine. This is mine. You know, this is yours. This is mine. And we respect each other's property. So to make a move into something that's like a collective is, uh, is a big deal. And, and I even applaud you for being on the call because it's, uh, it's, it's, to me, it's though where we need to go. It's where, you know, I was on a call the other day with Nassim Haramine. If you guys know him, he's this brilliant physicist and um, he's amazing. And so he's talking about what's going on currently. And one of the things that he just mentioned was about because there's such a, um, how should I put it, um, discordant, uh, unfair economic system. You know, he's talking about the systems, that the system that we're living in is, is not working, obviously. Like the system, you can see it, it's not working, right? And you have some people who have like so much money, like it's insane how much money they have. And then you have so many people starving dying there's people dying right now because they they don't have enough food and clean water right and and that's when it like he's talking about unification unification and and this is something i read to you the other day 
was something I had written about Cherry Hill. And, and that name is up for discussion too, but I just put that in because my mother always had this dream and she's passed on of a healing place called Cherry Hill. So I'd love it to be, even if it was the legal co-op docs, Cherry Hill, but a place where unification is the central theme. You know, this is, this is why you're there because you understand on some cellular level that together we will actually do better. We will actually flourish separately. And I'm sure you guys all know many people who are separate and lonely and it's a huge plague. And it's the biggest to me, the biggest plague. I know lots of people who sit at home by themselves and have very, very little social contact. They just, they're, they're so lonely and depressed. And I'm like, Oh my God, like it's sad in their little box, you know, in their little separate box with their little separate toaster and their little separate everything. And it's, it's making them sick. So I'm like, that, that's the huge piece of this is a unifying, thriving eco village, you know? So depending on how we uh, together design what we uh, want to create there, because there's a million things you could do. I mean, there's just so much potential there. And, you know, if we, if we all have no objections to, yeah, you want to have your little business come, coming out of this place or not, you, you know, maybe you're just retired and you just live here. That's your thing. You know, that it's all, it's all, it's all agreed upon, right? Awesome. Can I say something? Yes. Can I? I wasn't, I wasn't thinking of division when I asked you that. I was just thinking, I was just wondering if the driveways and stuff are set up in a way that you could subdivide if we needed to just to not carry a mortgage so that we actually did have some more money to put into the property. That's all. I, went, okay. I was just wondering if there's a way after the purchase, if there is a way to sell just a little bit of the land. Right just pay the mortgage off that's all that's all so i was thinking collective i wasn't thinking separating anything oh yeah like i wasn't thinking of you know hey can you sell me a chunk of land i was more no, no, thinking no. so the collective pot isn't starting with a big loss yeah no no and i wasn't actually getting that you were uh, insinuating that actually i kind of okay. just went off on a little tangent um <laughs> what what uh i think it's actually an interesting idea uh and there are other ways in right? And so what you would have to do, again, and it might be something we do agree on, is, is that title, right? That that title would be what you would, um, like, you could sell the title already. And then the subdivision part would be a separate question. Like, if you wanted to subdivide one of the titles, possibly, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Uh -huh. it's, it's uh, but I just think it's, 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 it's potentially a possibility. Um, but again, you know how that, that's all I was going there with is the bureauc bureauc I don't think it'd be an easy uh, fix because it's just the bureaucracy of people coming up there and, and um, allowing us to do it would take uh -huh. time. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a really, um, it's an interesting, like one of the things that I'm seeing is that that this sociocracy always starts with what are the problems to solve and what are the opportunities to take advantage of. And so whatever comes up as problematic or whatever opportunities kind of show themselves, a sociocratically governed group can say, okay, we have this problem. What are everyone's ideas about how to solve it? Mm -hmm. And then the most feasible idea and the one that there are people who are interested in making that solution happen, that's what ends up coming about, like Grace was talking about before, about how sociocracy kind of fosters this magical evolving process of possibilities into the one that suits us all best. And so that kind of, in a way, it brings it back. Um, and I, I get that there's kind of an overarching question of like, is it even possible in the model of the system? And um, again, that's sometimes where sociocracy really breaks systems down into, into something new by 
by you know just there being a group of people who all have enough passion and coordination to an investment in something to take it to a governing body who has jurisdiction and say you know we want we want there to be something brand new here so what does it take because we're all up for this um, i also wanted to uh yeah just maybe give more of the group an opportunity to chime in um i found out that the person who is showing up as hawaii media pad um is a facebook friend of mine so um but also she's not able to she's on a device that doesn't work um doesn't she, she doesn't know how it works to chime in here. So she's, she's on, I've got her on my messenger pad. She's asking a question about if there's a way to be part of this project without, if you don't have money to invest. Um, I would just off the top of my head, I would say yes. Um, and I would just say, keep in touch with us, you know, whether it's Nicole or myself at this point uh, until we have more people in place um, with roles. Uh, absolutely, as far as, you know, if you want to come and help us, uh, I, I, what I foresee is there'll be a lot of trading going on, like if you want to come and help us with the cleanup and the work bees and so forth. Um, obviously, you know, there would be trades there of, of that we as a group will figure out what those trades would be, you know, so. Um, yeah. Thanks. And I also wanted to introduce you to Jen too, who's, who's been quietly watching there. Um, I met Jen through the Arca tribe that I'm part of. Uh, we create pop-up temporary villages and uh, run experiments that maybe are a little more play-based than work-based, but they do take a lot of work. And um, when I first met Jen, I think like four years ago, she was about to go down to New Mexico to work with Mike Reynolds with Earthship Biotexture, Bio which is a bona fide uh, Earthship builder. So, okay. you know, she might come in handy one day, who knows? Oh, I know there's a awesome. lot of houses there already, but <laughs> they're also great for um, being greenhouses too. As we found out here in Calgary when another friend of ours, Scotty Reynolds helped, or Scotty, Scotty Davidson, getting all my names mixed up, um, built uh, an Earthship greenhouse for Grow Calgary, which is a local food security organization. Nice, nice. Yeah, so that's something else I wanna share just to anyone watching and listening about Awakening the Village is that over the past six or seven years, I've been developing a Rolodex full of really progressive um, village builders of all kinds from from like sociocracy and the soft structures or invisible structures of social permaculture to the people who build hard structures like Jen, um, earthships, hempcrete workers, um, geodensic dome builders, all kinds of all kinds of people. And then Grace also knows, obviously, she's mentioned a few of them. A lot of people out in the world who do some pretty cutting edge stuff. Um, in the earlier in this video she talked about or didn't know and in the other video we did she talked about a friend of hers who ha has a garbage processing um mm -hmm. patent plant that right. that basically turns waste into carbon and then the carbon's able to be sequestered as a additive to the land to develop soil for growing purposes and also we had the mutual friends that that introduced us in the first place have a really progressive lighting company and they they specialize in lights for um, industrial applications including growing in greenhouses so mm -hmm. between us we got a lot of people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and a lot i'd of love to build a sorry i'd love to build an airship jen like i i've been on his property down there in taos and it's amazing yeah so amazing and i mean that's this property is 182 acres so you know putting up small little things that are uh, and there's also a lot of hill like it's almost like it's almost like an old greek theater the way it you know it comes down because it's the slopes all around 
and then this big huge hay field in the middle right that you see kind of from every angle but I was looking at that too because one of my daughter and I's dream is actually to build a home into the ground into the earth like one of those earth homes like that's in the slope <laughs> yeah like the hobbit houses and you know you could hide a lot of homes in there um and you could build because we were just seeing so many possibilities there you could build little cob houses that are very tiny for camps where people could come and just have a bed and a loft and my friend C again with with her uh, she's already done that and I've seen it and you can easily put a bed in there and and it's under the required um, you know space numbers so that you you don't have to have anybody approve it you can just build this stuff and so if the group agreed again you know there's just so much potential up there it's not so much it's crazy it's awesome yeah cool okay. i have questions actually about like your cherry hill group like how many people are involved are you guys planning on like just going for it and then like moving on like are you gonna be is this happening uh well you know good question it's the uh, it's there's nine people who have that i have in the cauldron uh, nine, I would say groups, because there's some of them have a spouse or a child, um, you know, so there's nine groups. Um, we're, I will put it this way. I mentioned very early on that I do, I use a modality called SRT. I, I check in on a daily basis with spirit and go, am I still supposed to be working on this? And it's like, yep, keep going, keep going. So okay you know and uh and then every day something keeps propelling it forward you know so i'm 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 not attached to be honest with you jen with the location i love the location and i love the i love the um the the buildings you know honestly we could move in easily 20 people tomorrow you know no problem and uh and I love the potential and I love the fact that Quinnell's offering, you know, support for permaculture businesses and all that stuff. And that it's close to arts well for the artist community and that kind of stuff. But what Nicole, the other Nicole was, was alluding to is if it gets too intense from a financial point of view, and we feel like it's too much of a burden to carry this place, because that's the other piece that we've been looking at is the timelines, right? Is because there's a number of people who won't be moving in there right away. So then who's managing it? You know, like all of that has to be taken into account too, right? So if it's too overwhelming, like if it's just, and that's where that this discernment piece came through this morning was just keep going and discern, like discern if, if, you know, ultimately what's happening is the group is forming there's money we know what kind of money we have um and just trust in the process of of uh whether it's this pro if it's not this property then could be another property but uh i don't want to be too attached and too uh i don't know what the right word there is but too eager that i i don't see um like that we all lose our shirts and hate each other's guts and uh, yeah, I don't want it to be that. I want it to work. You know, I want it to be, uh, what is it, Nicole? It's safe enough to try. Good enough for now, safe enough to try. <laughs> yeah, good enough for now, safe enough to try, right? So um, that we all feel like that, right? It's good enough for now, safe enough to try. And uh, so there's still, yeah, we're still, I feel like we're still gathering information to be honest with you, Jen, like, like I said earlier, this piece about the fact that, that we could possibly even get a mortgage wasn't even on the table three days ago, you know? So there's always, there's always, you know, when I saw you, Nicole, after I saw you last week, I downloaded this book that I've never heard of. I just sort of found it. And it was this lawyer talking about how you can raise money for your project through shares, right. you know, through investment shares and all these different ways that you can do that. Mm -hmm. So again, that's another area of discussion because what she strongly suggests there 
is that you do it based on your values. So you're not just like, oh, anyone who give us money, yes, yes, you know, we'll take it. And yet the guy is, uh, you know, he's has he. Your values are here, and his are way back there, right? So you want to be really clear on what your values are, and then. Um, so people that want to come in and invest are in resonance with, with what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. um, it makes me want to talk a little bit more about some of the things that I've learned over my years of um, research into kind of what Diana's books are about. Um, Diana Leaf Christian wrote a book called Creating a Life Together and another book called Finding Community. And they're all books that came from decades of experience that she garnered visiting and talking to and living in uh, intentional communities, 95% um, of which fail. But what she visited were also the 5% that thrive and are around 40 years later, uh, 50 years later, and, mm -hmm. um, and really like distilled what it takes for a community to work. And she points to a lot of different levels of, of to consider and and from my perspective and in my own words, what I would say is that the, the vision and values are right, are right up at the top. You know, that's kind of your pole star. That's, that's the stuff that everything has to align under. And then all the things that come into alignment underneath, like the financial pieces and like the structures and, you know, the governance model is kind of up high because that needs to be really in line with your values in order to have the trickle down effect that, that you want to have. Um, what, what comes into it for me, and, and this, this is very much, uh, for those of you who know my work in, with Project Salvage, um, Project Salvage kind of distills seven movements that an individual would need to do in order to end up um, in the village of their wildest dreams. And so much of it has to do with clarity. And I hear you talking about clarity when you talk about discernment. You know, knowing, knowing whether you fall on this side of a line or that side of a line is so important, especially then being able to communicate that clarity um, so that people really know where you're at. There are a lot of assessment tools that, I, that I've come across that I just really love because they help to, to break things down and to quantify where are we really at with this process as are we as far along with all the steps as we need to be in order to keep up with everything there is to consider. Um, one of the questions that LJ just asked too, it was about, you know, grant money and things like grant money so often, mm -hmm. they can fall under an umbrella organization that's doing a project like this. To me, it comes into her earlier question too about what an individual might bring if they don't have investment money. And one of the things I've recommended to, you know, time and time again with different people, especially people who are in the job-based world, is to develop some kind of side hustle that's all yours, that can move with you when you move, so that you don't need to find a job in Quinell to live out here and then do an hour commute every day. Rather that you have some, some business that moves around with you that um, empowers you to bring your share, whether it's a share that's invested in the early stages and it becomes part of the down payment and um, then you become part of the purchasing group, or whether it's that you come in as more of an independent and then you help pay the mortgage by paying a rent amount each month, plus doing a share of work, but you have money to pay rent because you have a business and the business might be hinged to the land, like you might be one of the people who takes advantage of the grants and funding that um, you're talking about Quinell making available to people. And if you start a little organic food business and, and you're the one doing it, and then that garners income either by selling it to, the, to your friends and neighbors within the context of this village or further afield, and preferably a little bit of both, because probably within the context of the village, you want to do more sharing and exchanging and trading and bartering than trade for money. Though if there are people in the village who have a lot of extra money, for whatever reason, it can be nice to have money be part of that possible exchange. And again, these, these like agreements that are couched in other agreements, they're themselves all lined up. So you don't have something 
weird going on over here that doesn't line up with the values and then everyone else finds out about it and goes whoa whoa that's out of order and then there has to be a whole community conflict resolution process to kind of bring it back into alignment with the higher values and mission and, and vision of the of the whole group so those are all like I mean those are all those all take us back to what Grace was saying in the first place about how you know it's it's a complicated thing you know the reason we've all subscribed to this where most of us have or those of us who have have and while we have subscribed to this system that, that clearly doesn't work is because it really is a lot easier it's a lot easier to defer responsibility to a government and then complain about it than it is to actually become part of that government and actually change policy and you know i mean from university degrees to garnering enough votes to get into office it, it's all very complicated but in different ways but i think what we're all kind of especially through covid especially through those of us who have had kind of like kind of these life-changing things happen, whether it's, you know, finding out that your daughter has autism and that that's now changing your world, or, you know, finding out that you're just marginalized in, in regard to the status quo society and figuring out how to, you know, be your own person and find a niche for yourself. I think that COVID has now added this other layer to people's, like, being kind of jarred awake into a sense of, wow, how can we do this differently? How can I be more autonomous and free? How can I be autonomous and free in the context of a really well-organized and workable, small, local, governed decision-making groups that are layered you know, out into the, the macrocosm from this more microcosmic or mesocosmic level, individual, family, group, bigger village group, regional group, global group and maybe universal group one day i i was mm -hmm. i was laughing remembering um, my friend zoe during one of our visioning events um she wanted to make sure that there was a ufo pad and i wouldn't be surprised if grace wants to make sure there's a ufo pad too <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised if there was contact on that property <laughs> honest to god I, it crossed my mind as we were walking it i was like oh and in the meantime, that the, the landing pad idea loops into another question that I fielded earlier, which was someone who said that they noticed that that area was um, had a lot of fires through it a couple of years ago. And then mm -hmm. Grace told me the story of how the people of who own the land currently um, had invited the local firefighting um, people to kind of set up camp and set up a little base there, which we both thought was a very clever way to make sure you had your fire butt covered. And uh, yeah. that's definitely an invitation to, to make in the future to all kinds of um, mm -hmm. helpful people. You know, come stay here, work on your craft, do your business, use what we've got and, and be of benefit to us too. And I, I think that's kind of the whole point of it all, isn't it? It's creating mutual benefit mm -hmm. on an individual, interpersonal group level mm -hmm. so that people can thrive. Yeah, just like yeah. in your mission and vision statements. Yeah. Well, we've been going for an hour by now, and are there any final questions or things that people want to chime in about? Well, I sure do look forward to being kept abreast while the while the it, while the details emerge and finding out what happens. I know that if if it turns out that this isn't the land, that it's going to be uh, just as good or better and that through this process of, of sharing more um, hopefully more people will be attracted to the group and at least start to know about you maybe decide to team up and um, yeah I'd love to support you doing some more of that community building within your group to get more clarity and mm -hmm. between your group and others um, mm -hmm. I think that's really the name of the game is is that Rolodex that we all develop and become the hub of a village with other people who are the hub of another village. And then you have a cluster of hubs that are all locally um, proximate to each other while also creating that wider network that covers more ground and eventually mm -hmm. the whole globe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
which mm -hmm. I just feel so lucky lately to be in touch with. I'm having weekly calls with people in Russia, Germany, and Australia right now. That's and awesome. that lights me up. And they're all super progressive, not just sustainable, but regenerative culture builders yeah. who are yeah. serious about opening up the possibilities and becoming really flexible and fluid in our emergent abilities. Yeah, that's awesome. So you'll hear me talk about that a lot in the yeah. months, and months to come. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's amazing. And that's, that's the thing because, you know, when the going gets, when the workload gets a little intense on my desk, sometimes I think, ah, why don't you just join with C's group? Like, you know, you, I love C and it's like, no, like it's not where you're supposed to be. And, and, and what I realized just recently actually is that because there is this uh, grid work that I believe is happening. So wherever all these different eco villages are, and then we're communicating with each other. And there's already this great uh, connection between her and I. And so the sharing that's going on and, you know, with you, Nicole, and then other groups, like, so if we're all sharing information, then that's all being embedded into the planet right and what you were talking about that value then to me that's just like we're bringing it down we're making it real on the earth we're not just talking about it we're actually creating it and you know there's that tipping point right the more we create it and i think we do need to create it a little bit in some isolation only because there's um and just my own feeling about the next couple of years there's going to be some pressure some other pressures to to join in with certain things that I know for myself I don't want any part of. So this is enough to work on, and uh, and to do it in a somewhat isolated fashion will be, I think, enough. Yeah. You know, but later there will be that exponential effect with all these different eco villages all over the place, and sh you know, connected. It's, I think it's powerful. I think so too. And so, yeah, thank you everybody for being a part of this bioenergetic shift and participating in a really super practical way by being here today, hearing more about this project and just the possibilities that it represents. And I look forward to future Sundays where Awakening the Village Cafe uh, meets in Zoom and sometimes in person to, to share about projects and share about themes and uh, different aspects of what it takes to create the village of our the villages of our wildest dreams. And nice. yeah, so hit me up on uh, Facebook or on Patreon, and yeah, refer to the the show notes. You'll see all the info there. Woohoo! We keep rocking it, everybody. Have a great rest of your Thanks, everybody. day. And um, yeah, happy anniversary tomorrow for that second year of creating those vision and mission statements. Oh, thanks, thanks. I love that. That's so exciting. Isn't it? Yeah. It also goes to show how fast time flies, you know? It's oh. like craziness. Very, very, very grateful. Thank you so, so much for sending <laughs> Nicole and really nice to meet you all and all, all our gang that's here glad you guys are here and yeah, uh, if you have any other questions down the road feel free to reach out for all sure right. awesome yeah. thank you bye-bye